Welcome to our CKPG News special focusing on Prince George's efforts in supporting 2017 BC wildfire evacuees. My name is Tyson Fedora and over the next half an hour we will take a look back at some of the stories that affected tens of thousands of people throughout the central interior. Over 10,000 evacuees registered here at the College of New Caledonia after they were forced to flee their homes. This was the main hub for many of those evacuees. We begin with day one, the emergency reception center opened and for evacuees from 100 Mile House and surrounding areas, they were the first to arrive. They would call Prince George their temporary home for a number of weeks. Many left scared and on edge, but it was something the city was well prepared for. Evacuees from the Caribou are expected to flood the College of New Caledonia in Prince George over the next couple of days as evacuation orders are now in place. Yeah, absolutely. We're ready. Mayor Lynn Hall says the city is prepared to welcome in thousands of people fleeing from the wildfires and an evacuation order is now in place for 100 Mile House, a population of just over 1,900 people. If we fill up the College of New Caledonia, uh, then we have other locations that we'll move into. If we fill those up, we'll just keep moving into other locations. Those locations include UNBC, schools and the Civic Centre. For evacuees, shock is the only word that comes to mind. It's crazy. It's crazy how stuff just comes out of nowhere and takes over, it takes control and moves an entire, moves an entire town. You think about it, it was worse when I was trying to leave because I'm thinking, oh my God, all these things, right? And I, I, even my, my truck, my baby, I had to leave it because I, I can't drive two vehicles. It's pretty bad. It's tense. We might not have much to go back to because it's, it's dry. Nathan Valcourt is a logger from 100 Mile House and he's hoping that his logging equipment will be salvageable when the order is lifted. As for Curtis Young, he was separated from his family on the highway. We got cut off over between uh, 150 Mile and Williams Lake and the fire jumped the, jumped the highway and we got cut off and so my family's down in Kamloops, I'm up here. For many of these evacuees, they're just left with the clothes on their back and the hope that they can return home sometime soon. Many evacuees took full advantage of places to stay, including reception centers, but some were fortunate enough to be welcomed into homes across the city. Here's a story about a local resident who opened up her home, heart and property to 17 Williams Lake evacuees and their livestock. <laughs> they share stories and jokes enjoying each other's company on an acreage just east of Prince George. All were evacuated from Williams Lake. What brought them together was their animals. Sheila Stadel opened her home and property to 17 evacuees and their livestock. They were asking for transport drivers to haul uh, horses out of and stock out of the Williams Lake Stampede Grounds to Prince George. So I uh, got on their permitted list. I had two trucks, two trailers. The animals landed here and then people started coming in with their animals. Each of the evacuees brought their livestock with them. Included are these six sheep, 31 horses, a pig, a bull and countless cats and dogs. It started off, everyone was fairly stressed and you could just see, uh, you know, as the days progressed, they started relaxing and getting a little bit more into routine. Sheila grew up in Williams Lake. Some of those staying at her acreage are relatives, but most are friends and acquaintances. We've known Sheila for years, so it was no big deal to come here. It's just like being at home. Every one of us were from the same neighborhood, pretty much. And though we didn't socialize together, we knew of each other. And so it, like, how can it not be good? Sheila also opened up her property in town to a family of seven. She was prepared to help the evacuees on her own, but Prince George stepped up. It's really overwhelming. There's been a lot of tears with just the outpouring of love and support from the Prince George and the community. <coughs> Hay, dog and cat food was donated. Shampoo, laundry soap and various other items were also dropped off. In spite of being away from your own home, it was so amazing the way Prince George welcomed us. They treated us like royalty. We were taken care of and never had a moment's worry. Food was supplied and Red Cross was here. <laughs> but bigger than that is the emotional support evacuees give each other. Each night they gather to socialize and have dinner. This is a big tight village. I mean, everybody's friends with everybody and 
somebody needs something done, just dish in and get it done. We didn't know everybody. We've now become really close friends and we're talking about making this an annual get together <laughs> to you know, share that camaraderie. Hannah Tita, yeah. CKPG News. We, we throw, we throw. Stato's home wasn't the only place to see displaced livestock as the city welcomed in hundreds of animals, including the Prince George Horse Society at the Agriplex. Many evacuees dropped off animals, including horses, chickens and cows. It was something the society believed was the right thing to do as they were willing to do whatever they could to help during these trying times. It's been a little bit chaotic, but we've had amazing volunteers, amazing community support, and it's, it's coming all the way from Vanderhoof, from Chetwin, and Williams Lake, Quinnell, they're all doing all that they can. We are set up for chickens, pigs, turkeys, whatever they need, cows. We got some cows probably coming in now tonight, and anything that people need, we're, we're trying to make it work. Prince George also offered support on the front lines during this year's wildfire crisis. Firefighters from the regional district of Fraser Fort George and volunteers of Prince George Search and Rescue logged countless hours when the wildfires continued to rage throughout the Caribou. As people fled the wildfires approaching Williams Lake this weekend, firefighters rushed towards them, some of whom were volunteer firefighters from the regional district of Fraser Fort George. Since the wildfire situation began, which takes us back to, I guess, that first weekend in July, uh, we've had four of our volunteer departments respond and provide support either through crews and or equipment. The Ferndale Tabor, Beaverly, Salmon Valley and Mackenzie Fire Departments are all assisting in the Caribou. Four engines and two sprinkler protection units as well as nearly a dozen firefighters were deployed. It's a very fluid situation. It could change day to day depending both on what the fire risk is looking like in our own communities and also what, uh, what sort of uh, volunteer personnel that we have available. But it's not just firefighters who answered the call. PG Star has actually been down there twice now. So we were down last weekend and we were the weekend before. Uh, last weekend we had close to 15 members uh, supporting uh, Central Caribou Search and Rescue uh, out of Williams Lake uh, doing an evacuation uh, order uh, for the community. In total, 45 search and rescue members from Williams Lake, Quinnell, Prince George, Vanderhoof, Smithers and 100 Mile House have been working in the Caribou, many of whom are still in Williams Lake. They are working 15 to 18 hour days on average. If you kind of average that out over the days that our teams, not just our teams, but also our volunteers have been down there, we're sitting around 4,500 hours over two weekends of straight volunteer time. Volunteer hours may go unnoticed, but any and all help is appreciated. What it shows is really that, you know, we're all one community and uh, within BC, you know, we're neighbours, we're friends and where there's a need and we have a, uh, an ability to help out, we're going to do that much as we would expect the same in return should we find ourselves in that situation. Sending all available resources joined in the battle against BC wildfires. Hannah Tita, CKPG News. Coming up, hundreds of volunteers sign up to help in the wildfire efforts. Welcome back. When Prince George saw an influx of evacuees, many community groups and organizations went above and beyond to house evacuees that were displaced and make them feel as comfortable as possible. One of those groups was AIM High, who housed 18 evacuees with special needs along with their caretakers from Williams Lake. Everywhere you looked was smoke. Up top of the hills was full of smoke. The other side was full of smoke. The valley was full of smoke. Like it was, it was scary. Like you didn't know if you were going to live or die. He is calling AIM High a temporary home. Mike Gayblades is a patient at the Jubilee Care House in Williams Lake. He was one of the many evacuated to Prince George. We grouped them all together on Sunday and Monday came around and the evening we got the, the notice and the staff had them packed and we were out of there. A total of 18 people, both with special needs and their caretakers, were welcomed at AIM High with open arms. When we realized that we needed to step up to the plate and help out, 
Uh, we went out and purchased uh, brand new bedding, uh, brand new beds, uh, pillows, and sheets and mattress covers uh, for individuals so that they could be comfortable and feel at home. AIM High's plans for renovating their gym have been put on hold. Right now, the organization is working with Community Living BC to meet the needs of patients and caretakers. We've purchased groceries uh, for people here. Uh, we have a kitchen program that runs uh, meals uh, daily, Wednesday to Friday. And, um, and so they'll get to be part of our kitchen program. And in the evenings, they'll cook their own meals. We have wanted for nothing. It, I can't say amazing enough. <laughs> The evacuees here can't say enough about Aim High and Prince George. It feels a lot like home because everybody in Prince George, I don't care what you say, we are family. Like I'd like to thank Aim High for uh, providing us with beds and everything. But all the same, there is still one thing on their minds. Hopefully that it gets over with and that we can go home. AIM HIGH IS ON STANDBY FOR EIGHT MORE PEOPLE AT THE COMMUNITY LIVING CENTER IN WILLIAMS LAKE. THE ORGANIZATION IS READY TO RECEIVE THEM IF CONDITIONS GET WORSE. HANNAH TITA, CKPG NEWS. PRINCE GEORGE SHOWED WHY WE ARE CALLED THE VOLUNTEER CITY DURING THE WILDFIRE CRISIS AS 800 VOLUNTEERS REGISTERED TO LEND A HELPING HAND ANY WAY POSSIBLE. The volunteer center that was located at the conference and civic center saw hundreds show up on day one to volunteer, with many just happy to be a part of the process. The center was a hub for recruitment, training, scheduling, and the deployment of volunteers. That's really behind this whole registration effort is to is to manage this effectively, but also to to align the skills of volunteers with where, where they can be put to use the best. It's incredible to see the response from people in the community. It's, it's one of those days, there's a lot of them thankfully, but it's definitely one of those days when you feel really proud to be from Prince George, that's for sure. It's a career based on saving lives and for one Williams Lake family doctor who was forced from her home, she was left wondering what's next. She ran into a few of her patients here in Prince George, some needing medical attention. It was that moment she realized she needed to step up and assist any way she could. I've shared a couple of tears with some patients. Dr. Um, Jolene Stale found herself thrown from one fire to another. Dr. Stale was at work last Friday when she saw the fire coming toward her office. So my husband phoned me and said, you better get here quickly, we need to pack. Um, the fire was so big in the 50, I didn't think I was going to be able to get there, to get across the road. and. We went home and we packed and we packed our trailer and our dogs and our kids. Um, we left, we got out at about 6 and the evacuation order came at 8.23. Uh, we didn't hear an alert, we just knew the fire was coming, we could see it. Um, my neighbor left about an hour later and she took a photo um, before she left in the fire. It was like a wall of fire was right next to her house. Dr. Stale arrived at the College of New Caledonia Evacuee Center on Saturday with her family in tow. I saw a lot of my own patients here. Um, specifically, I think what triggered it, one of my patients that I know recently went through quite a lot of drama in her, with her health, had major surgery, lots of things going on, of which I was probably the only one that could have put it all together. And she was sleeping here in, in, on a cot bed with all the other patients. And I knew if something was going to happen to her, you know, it's going to be difficult for, for an outsider to pick up the pieces. Continuing her work after the evacuation gives her a feeling of purpose. It feels like seeing family again when I'm seeing my patients and I'm knowing they're safe and so far everyone's homes or most of the homes are okay. Uh, so I went to find Dr. Stiles and she was actually in a first aid uh, room. Uh, had set up her electronic medical record and was seeing patients right away with the supplies that she had. Um, she has two small children herself. Uh, she's camping here uh, and she's been here every day uh, providing services because she just wants to do something to help. Dr. Stale joined the rest of the medical team at the evacuation medical clinic. She just brings a depth of knowledge about her community uh, that I think is really calming uh, for families. I've got a a lady on dialysis and she started crying when she saw me because she didn't think she would get her medical care and now it's easy I'm just in a different place. 
Dr. Stale is now surrounded by other medical professionals and glad she's able to continue to help evacuees, even though she is one herself. Dave Branco, CKPG News. Coming up next, the city bands together to offer free skating for wildfire victims. It's a story that may bring joy to your heart as sports organizations hosted a number of events for evacuees while they were in Prince George, including an evening of skating. Peter Houston takes us through Forget the Fire Part 2, hosted by Northern BC Center for Skating. Finn Burl never thought he'd be lacing up his skates in the middle of summer in Prince George. The Burl family evacuated their home in Williams Lake 10 days ago due to the wildfires and have been staying in Prince George ever since. Last night they got to take advantage of a free skate night put on by the Northern BC Center for Skating. It was like, I was like really anxious because like I haven't skated for like ever. The Burl family spends most of their days going to the park and doing outdoor summer activities and didn't anticipate to be on the ice during their stay in Prince George. It was even a bit of a struggle remembering what skate size fit. Last I had to try out two, then a one, then a four, then I had to switch back to three. <laughs> Organizers said the evacuees were extremely grateful for the chance to skate and temporarily forget the fires. People have been really appreciative, you know, it, it's been so great to have that positive feedback and have people come up to you and say, you know, this is, this is just such a, a wonderful thing you've done and, um, and I tell them, you know, I haven't done it, it's just community coming together and it's what Prince George is all about. Last night's skating event is just the latest of many examples of Prince George coming together to support the evacuees, something they say hasn't gone unnoticed. I think most of us are really overwhelmed with the generosity and the kindness uh, that we've had here. Yeah, absolutely. And they can expect that generosity and kindness to continue as long as they are here. When thousands continued to pour into the city, not knowing what lay ahead, the Prince George Railway and Forestry Museum opened up its doors for free to evacuees offering free popcorn and hot dogs. Similar organizations like Exploration Place and the Two Rivers Gallery did the same thing. The museum felt that it allowed evacuees to forget about the fires near their homes and spend time with the ones they love the most. The museum it belongs to the community and we support the community and these poor displaced people, uh, I think they're stressed, they're worried about their homes, they're worried about their families. They need to just get out and de-stress a little bit so that we were just hoping to uh, have them come out to the museum, go for a free train ride, have a hot dog. Uh, of course all of this is sponsored by Deloitte and Rolling Mix and we just wanted them to come out and have a little bit of fun and just forget about their worries for a little while. Coming up next, evacuees get the news they can return home. Now it's something we sometimes forget about, food. And with an influx of evacuees coming into a new city, many of them are just looking to eat. It was the first time the media was invited to tour the kitchen that produced thousands of meals for hundreds of people. The kitchen at the College of New Caledonia is normally pretty quiet this time of year. But for the past week, upwards of 50 volunteer cooks like Kyle Ross and Alex Whitman have come here to prepare hundreds of meals. Um, the last couple of days it's been three to five hundred people yeah. for lunches alone. Well usually they aren't bad, it's just a lot of uh, cooking for large amounts of people. So we're just basically uh, getting everything set up and then uh, the uh, other staff or not staff, but the volunteers, uh, they, they serve it for us. These volunteers are a godsend for Bill Glasgow of the Salvation Army, who has been tasked with running the kitchen to feed the evacuees, a task he knew nothing about. It, it means that I can get this done uh, on my own. There's no way I could do this. Um, 
and with all these people coming out and helping and volunteering every day, it makes what I'm doing a lot easier. Um, it makes it possible. Um, so, I mean, I, the spotlight being on me is, is not is, 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 doesn't need to be done. The, the, the volunteers here are helping out that, that the spotlight should be on. They are fantastic. He is not alone in being a novice to the task. This is this young lady's first day volunteering and has an admission when asked if she knows what to expect. Nope. <laughs> It'll be good. Smile. <laughs> Glasgow says the generosity shown by the volunteers who turn up every day brings tears to his eyes. I used to say every year at Christmas time when we do the kettles that it's so nice to see the community come together. On this scale, it's, it's way more and it is... I'm, I'm, I'm almost at tears a lot during the day when I talk to people that see these volunteers coming in and helping out uh, and just doing it day after day. And there's people who have jobs who come here and, and they, they volunteer for six, eight hours and then they go to their job for six, eight hours. So it's, it's just fantastic to see how this community has come together to, to help these, these individuals who have been evacuated. He has equal praise for the different food vendors and restaurants that have stepped forward to provide the food they need to prepare. Cheryl Jan, CKPG News. It was the good news evacuees were hoping to hear. Williams Lake residents found out that an evacuation order was downgraded to an evacuation alert, allowing them to return home. Just days earlier, 100 Mile House evacuees found out the same news as many of them returned home on buses. They were just grateful for their time here in their temporary home. Thank you, Prince George, Thank you, for everything. Your name is Smiles on faces, a few tears being shed, and hugs to go around. And for these 36 evacuees, today is a good day. It's going to be a long bus ride home, but at least I'm getting home. Yeah, you said you're going to touch, so. Evacuees loaded up their belongings on two buses en route to 100 Mile House before boarding and taking off. We can't wait to get back. Things are going are, are, um, back to normal. We have hospital, we have pharmacy. They're doing whatever they can to welcome us home. And It's been a long two weeks. These evacuees, along with their 13 pets, will have the opportunity to sleep in their own beds. But that's not the only thing they're looking forward to. My cats can run around. They're not trapped up in a pen, uh, uh, kennel. And I get to see my girlfriend tonight, hopefully, or tomorrow, and hopefully see my dad this weekend. Clean out the bridge first and then, then take a shower and relax. Sleep on your own beds and be home and be able to relax. Everyone here says they have something to return to, but many are just grateful for their temporary stay in Prince George. Just the generosity of this city is... I've had perfect strangers come up to me and give me 20 bucks. I went to go swimming, it was great yeah. here in Prince yeah. George. Yeah. As the buses depart, it's hopefully the start of more good news to come for the remaining evacuees. It was only a glimpse as to what happened during the wildfire crisis, but over the last 30 minutes, you were able to witness what the city of Prince George was able to achieve when supporting evacuees. Thanks so much for watching.